This video represents my personal opinion. Hello, Dave Bench here, and today I'm going to tell you about a little project that uh, we put out on GitHub. It's the uh, Adobe to Adobe AEM boilerplate. And basically what this is, is a project that uh, we threw together based on requests from people in the community. Um, we've gotten a couple requests uh, throughout the last year saying, hey, give us an example of how you start up a AEM project. How do you get rolling? Um, that would be a great example to see. So here it is. Um, I took a couple uh, weeks to clean up and put together a boilerplate that we use internally um, when we get started on an AEM project. So this project can be found on our GitHub, which is Adobe at Adobe. And I'll show it to you on the screen here. And if you look down through it, it is based off of the uh, Maven multi-module archetype. Um, but from there, we actually took it and broke it out a little bit further based on our own personal uh, experience and, and personal preferences for the project setup. If you notice some of the differences, um, is, is that we, we break down the modules on a much more granular level and then we have a lot more profiles. So I'll show you what it looks like. You can find it here. We have a readme. It goes over the reactor, the modules, um, the module structure, um, and then how to use it and some of the commands that we, we put together. And then I also outline in the GitHub uh, readme, you know, kind of where we deviated from the Maven mar uh, archetype and some of the, the existing best practices um, we've uh, ignored or changed a little bit based on our own personal preferences. So, uh, you know, uh, use this as you'd like and give us your feedback and we'll, we'll make some changes to it as uh, we go forward with our applications and find, uh, you know, things that we like better. We'll, we'll be updating this as we go forward. And we've already based a couple projects based on this uh, open source version. And I'll show you now the project. <clears throat> so I've downloaded the project already from GitHub. I'm going to open up in IntelliJ and kind of go over some of the pieces and, and show you what we've done. So what we've done that's a little bit different than, in, than the Maven multi-module is um, a few things here. Uh, so first off, I'm just going to call it the sections and let you guys, uh, you know, hopefully you'll help understand what they are. So in, in the main project here, we have modules and then we have the parent application. The parent application is basically calling out all of our dependencies. So if you look inside here, and this is based off of 6.1 um, and an early build or early release of 6.1. So you may need to update the dependency versioning. Um, uh, just just forewarning you on that. Um, if you look at the um, the palm for the parent, it's going to call out that it's you know in the boilerplate application. You know some of the top level items. Um, also, all your properties are defined here. They get passed down to all the other modules and other palms. Um, publish server, author server, uh, Serex ports, um, login, stuff like that. Um, we also include the repositories in this section. So in here, we put in most of our main repositories that we typically use. Uh, we put in our plugin repositories. We have our build configuration in here. And then we have a dependency. Uh, so we have dependency management here. And this is where we include um, the versioning, all the dependencies for all of our modules. And basically we call out the version so we can keep the versions consistent across all the modules. And then we also, I believe, yep, we do. We have dependencies that apply to everything down here at the bottom of the parent as well. So that's the parent palm. Um, underneath here at the base of the application, you'll find the reactor palm. The reactor palm just basically calls out the modules, the submodules and then kind of their build order. So first is parent, next application, next to site config, or site content, sorry, and then config and then bundle. So if you look over here, and that's basically the way we broke it out. And there's, I'll explain a little bit why we broke it out when I start talking about the profiles over here. So inside each of these, uh, application is gonna be your main code. So this is gonna include um, your app, your design, you know, uh, I also included Libs Foundation JSP in here for resolution on your um, objects that are built in on the global. Um, but in here is is mostly the things that would be included in like a version release, uh, version one to version two, um, or you know three, four, or whatever. Um, this does not include any content, anything that's related to configuration. This is basic. This application just is code, 
Uh, and one of the reasons we like to keep this as its own module is we also have um, a build profile over here that um, correlates to just this one module. So when I say, when I, when I do a build and I do an install and I select this profile here, it's going to take just the stuff that's in the application and deploy it. And the reason this is handy is because um, there's a lot of times when you'll be working on something and you know you do a bunch of uh, content changes and everything and if your root structure your content structure is included with the code every time you deploy you're going to reset or you could alter the state of the uh, authored content so we like to separate the authored content from the application completely and i'll show you that here uh, underneath here we have uh, another module for bundles and i believe i included some source code just some funky source code what is it uh, the logic for for building things. Um, basically, things were included in the CEC application, um, and I decided to put an example in here. And I don't know if it's a, a good chunk of code, but uh, it, it is an example of a bundle application that gets deployed. Um, and then underneath here, we have config. So this is the config for your application. So, um, and we've broken this out. There'll be another version of this that I'm going to put out here soon. Uh, a V2, as you say, uh, it, it's going to include a little bit more refinement on the config. Um, we found as we're going forward, especially on one, one of the sites I'm, I've been working on, that we have a config author, author and a config pub. Um, and then we also have a section called config internal where we keep all our um, stuff that we don't want to put out on GitHub, right? The, 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 the paths to services, the initialization of services. Um, in, in the config, we put more generic items that configures OS, OSGI bundles and, and, and permissions and whatnot. Um, and then we end up with another set of uh, configurations that are kind of the internal ones that have the, more of the, the password type stuff or path and service type stuff. So um, we'll put it, be putting out another version of this where there'll be actually two different config uh, submodules. And one will be for author and one's basically for publish. Um, you can you know kind of break it apart the way you want. So the next module here is site content. So you know to start developing any site, and when developers come onto your project, there has to be some you know some structure, some piece, some section of a site. The the site root, um, the a lot of the the things that set up the site uh, cloud services and everything initially, um, all that is you know underneath the content. Uh, so you have to have the content tree in there somewhere. So what we've done is we've broken out the site content into a module called site content. And what this does is it allows us to include or not include uh, the site content based on what kind of build we're going to be doing. So in here, you'll see things like um, we have tags. Um, so the tag namespace, um, we have, uh, let's see, Etsy tags. Then we have um, the CEC content. And I think we just included the, the home directory, basically. I didn't put all the content in here. Um, if you want a, a full site type example of this, the same pattern, um, out on Git is also our AEM, um, what did I call it? A the AEM um, single page application. Where is that at? Yeah, SPA example. So if you look in the SPA example, you'll also see the same pattern being used um, where you'll have the modules. And in this particular example, like I said, this is like version two of the same thing that's that's being put out here. Um, in here, we're trying out doing a config author, config both, config publish, and site content. Uh, there's also a little bit more sample content in here. Um, this this so this is your site content here. Not much in there, just you know, just stuff to get it seeded. Um, in in the example of the uh, SPA example that I was just flipping through, uh, in that one we actually have pretty much a full site under there. Um, you know, and the the thing you run into a lot is you need the full site to start. It's like your version 1.0 site, right? Um, but from the after the developers are done with that version 1.0 site, the site is going to be authored from that point on. You really can't deploy to it. You really can't touch it. Um, anything that goes into that that you know the authorable space has to be done through configuration scripts or deployment scripts of some sort, or else you you risk uh, losing authored content, which is not good. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of the structure of the way it is. So hopefully you've understood my babbling here. Um, I'm going to go over the build profiles now. 
So over here in Maven, uh, in the in the Maven project se section of uh, IntelliJ here, you can see all of our sub applications. And uh, boilerplate application is giving me an error on dependencies for the AC uh, AM commons. Not exactly sure why that is because it deploy it deploys it and bundles it fine. I'm not sure why that's giving me a big red mark, but uh, sorry about that, Justin. If you if you watch this video, um, <laughs> so. In here, we, we, we you'll see all the applications, the boilerplate parent application, the boilerplate application, the bundle, the configuration, the content, and the reactor. Uh, so on this, this application here, we usually go into the reactor, go into lifecycle, and then up here, you'll notice there's, there's a bunch of profiles. There's auto install application, auto install application publish, auto install bundle, auto install config, auto install config publish, auto install config or default content, auto install default 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 content publish. So um, basically, you know, it, it's kind of a, a basket, right? So if I'm doing, it's a pick list for, for a better word. So say I'm working on an author install locally and I'm doing some development. Um, the Actually the application includes the bundle. That's the way the project's set up. But um, let's say that I wanted to deploy to uh, an author install and, and, and work on it, right? So I would, this is my initial install. There's nothing but installed. I would put in the application, the config, and the default content, right? When I hit install here and I run this, it's going to go through and take all those projects, create uh, a package for each of them, and then deploy them to the target server, right? So then now that I've actually deployed the default content, I've installed any configuration options, uh, config being anything from underneath the cloud services, uh, to anything in, in, in some of the Etsy uh, directories or um, actually some SB, uh, an OSGI uh, bundle configs. All right, so I don't need to do that again, right? Because I've already deployed the default content and the config. So from now on, when I'm working on my application, usually most of your work is being done in application uh, in Etsy and in apps, right? So as I'm working in here, plugging away, um, usually all I'll do is uh, just another install of just the application and not, you know, I don't need the config to run again. I don't need the default content to be reloaded and reset everything. Um, you know, that being said, sometimes, yeah, I've messed around with the authoring content. I've made a big mess. Um, I can reset it back to default by also hitting auto install default content and it will, you know, clean out a lot of the changes I made and reapply the default content so I can start over again. Um, so say you want to do um, two servers. So you want to do, you know, publish and uh, you want to initialize both publish and the author. You can go through here and just, well, let's see, not bundle. Bundle's already included, so we don't need to do that. The reason auto install bundle is by itself is because sometimes you're working on just the bundle project or a bundle project and you want to just deploy the bundle. You don't want the application. You don't want the config. You don't want the content. You just want your bundle. So um, by deselecting the rest of them and selecting bundle, it's just going to push the bundle. Uh, pretty pretty uh, clear there. Um, so yeah, now if I did uh, an install run run build here, I would get just those pieces pushed to both author and the publish server. Um, makes it really handy. It, it, we found that the, uh, the developers that I've pushed it to that they've been using it uh, really like it. Um, saves them a lot of errors and uh, makes it nice and, and configurable. Um, at this point, I'd, yeah, the last two projects we've done, we haven't been using a continuous integration server, um, but my intention is that this would be also uh, easier to use with a, a continuous integration server because you can just tell it what pieces you need to deploy. So you can set up uh, different builds for the different pieces, right? So, um, you know, basically just the application most of the time. Um, the config would only be on like an initialization of a new server. Uh, on initialization of a new server, you want to include all three and then some type of existing content migration. Um, so there we go. There's the uh, overview of our project. Here once again is our AEM boilerplate project on GitHub. Uh, check it out. Let us know what you think. And uh, we'll be working on it more and more and updating it based on your feedback and based on our experiences as we go forward. Cheers.